Hey there, folks. So, uh, got something hopefully interesting today. In fact, I have messed up hair is what I have, but, uh, <laughs> anyway. So, we got this, basically this game called Crossfire. Uh, this is the original copy of it for the Apple II. It didn't come in a Ziploc bag, it just came shrink-wrapped in a folder, but I have it in a Ziploc because I don't want it to get lost. Um, but this is the, this is the original copy of this game for the Apple II. Um, and you can see here, um, first of all, it says on it, well, you can't see unless I show it to you, but it says here it's, it costs twenty nine ninety five. it's 48K disc, Apple II or 2 Plus, DOS 3.2 and 3.3, um, and here's the original disc, um, it came with this nice online systems sleeve, and then like a sort of gold reflective, um, label which is hard to read from you know because the lights reflecting on it funny basically it says cr crossfire by online by jay sullivan 1981 online systems and so i'll load up this game so you can see what it's like and uh let me put my other headphone in so i can hear properly and let me move this out of the way as well so unfortunately i wasn't able to actually even though i have the original disc i wasn't able to load the original disc onto my computer in an emulator because the um, I don't have a, like an applesauce card. I'm, I want to get one. And uh, the thing I currently use to image discs doesn't work with discs that are in DOS, Apple DOS 3.2 format, which this one apparently is. So I'm trying to get another solution. But in the meantime, I had to unfortunately download a disc image for the Apple II disc, um, even though I have the disc. So it's, that's really freaking annoying. But let me uh, load up the emulator here and... Uh, to get this thing going. So this is it. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's reboot though. This is uh, Apple Win. So Crossfire. This, I guess this disc is from 98, or this image is from 1982 because they re released it a few times. But it says here, written by Jay Sullivan. Uh, you have a choice in keyboard or joystick. I'll use a keyboard. Theoretically, that's easier, although the keyboard controls are actually sort of a pain in the butt. If you look at the manual here, um, I'll just show you. The, uh, the Basically, the way the keyboard controls work is you have to use two different sets of keys, one to uh, move your guy and one to shoot. So you'll see that in a second, how that works once I get it started. But I'll pick keyboard controls. You this nice title screen here with the thing shooting. So this is the original version of the game. And then basically the game itself is pretty straightforward and simple. It's like one of those things which is like easy to learn and hard to master. And uh, you're this you're this little guy that's like running around. This is a demo mode. I'm not doing anything. You're this little guy on the bottom of the left of the screen who just got shot, and he's running around basically shooting. He can shoot in any direction. That's why with the keyboard you actually have to there's four different direction buttons to fire. And then you have to go around basically shooting all these aliens that are coming at you on the grid. And that's essentially the concept. Like I said, it's not it's not that easy. And you'll see it has some nice audio. Uh, and it has, you know, okay audio at least. And it has some decent graphics. So let's start the game. See if I can control this thing. All right, there we go. Wait, hold on a second. I'm not either press right. All right, there we go. I was pressing the wrong buttons. <laughs> it's hard to get on the right keyboard buttons. So you got to like really pay attention to what's going on here because you can't go down below where I am right now. It doesn't let you go into there. So if you put yourself in like a certain position, you could be like sort of boxed into a corner and then you get picked off pretty easily. Like I almost just was. Um, but if you know what you're doing, you can do a little better. Also, you can run out of bullets. Oh, shoot. So I just got killed. Hey, Mark, how's it going? You can run out of bullets which I basically just did. I can also pick up these things for points if I if I can find them at the right time. Uh, I'll do better in a second. It's hard to explain the game and also, <laughs> also try to play it at the same time. So, Mark, did you have this game back in the day? And also, you can play with the joystick. If you play the joystick, and I'll do that with one of the Atari versions at least. If you play with the joystick, it's a little bit... Uh, <laughs> the bullets move faster than you. It's already game over. Yeah, I think this, things are pretty good here. Uh, let me try that more time. So, um, what was I saying? If you play with the joystick, it's a little bit easier. To... Yeah, I can't, like, talk while I'm playing. If you play with the joystick, it's a little bit easier to control because you don't have to, like, worry about two different sets of keys. But the two different sets of keys, you sort of do get used to it after after a certain point of time. Hey, Ryan, how you doing, man? 
So yeah, this you so you had this for either eight, Atari eight bit or C sixty four. Yeah. So see, it also came out for the C sixty four. That's one version I do not have, and the Vic twenty it came out for as well. Um, and the, and actually this board doesn't just last forever. I mean, you sort of can you see the aliens on the side are starting to become less numerous. But they will like they will surround you and like wipe you out if you don't. Uh, if you don't play, do what you, if, I'm, if I try to read the chat and play at the same time, I inherently have a problem here. But I am going to try to do it anyway. Oh, come on. What am I doing? It's, it's, not, it's very difficult, actually, until you get used to it. To, to like, it's like almost like Robotron or something. The fact that like you have your know, Robotron that was two joysticks. Here I have to essentially... I'm, doing, I'm, I'm sort of simulating two joysticks with the keyboard. But if you actually are paying attention and you're not like doing other things... You can sort of get in a groove. I mean, I was getting in a groove before and doing a pretty good job. Even now, I'm doing okay. But if I let myself get boxed into a corner, that's where I get killed. So now I'm at the top here. If Like, you can't run the bullet, so... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, was, I, I tried to read the chat again. <laughs> it's hard to follow chat in high-intensity action games. Yeah, thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. For those of you who are joining, <laughs> joining now, this is the original Apple II version of Crossfire by CR Online. Uh, I'll show the original folder again that the game came in, and here's the original disc. And it's basically, like I said, a pretty simple game where you go around in this maze trying to survive and shoot enemies. <laughs> And it is possible to survive as long as you actually pay attention. You think Mark played a game like this on Monday Mame? Which game did he play? Mark, do you remember? So the, I got shot enough aliens so they gave me something to pick up for points. Also, like I said, you do run out of bullets. So when you run out of bullets, um, then you get like an option to pick up some more. But you got to go like you know, find them and get them. And you could die in the meantime. But yeah, I mean, I, it's 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 like a simple game. Listen, if I had choice seen this or like you know Police Quest, and I'll try again because I'm still talking. If I had choice, if I had choice seen this or Police Quest, I probably would play Police Quest. I mean, to be honest, like compared to like some of the Sierra games that came later on, it's obviously a lot simpler. But you know, I don't want to discount it for that reason. It's 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 like one of those like sort of simple arcade games that that could be a lot of fun. Oh my god. I dodged that fire just in time. I'm doing pretty well right now. I shouldn't talk so much. Ah! <laughs> they triangulated me there. Alright, again, I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't talk so much. I should jinx myself. If I actually don't have, like, can concentrate for a minute, I'm sure I can do better. I don't know, I missed that. And you can't go down to the bottom below where I am right now, so, like, that's the other thing. It looks like you can go down there, but you can't. You can't go further to the right from, like, say, here either. So, it, it, literally, I'm boxing myself into a corner if I don't... Oh, my gosh. And also, there's, there's very, um... There's very, uh... Let's say, generous hit detection. <laughs> In terms... Generous for the enemies. So, like, you, you, if you're going to come close to hitting somebody, you're going to hit them, basically. You can't avoid them. What do you say, Mark? It's definitely atypical for Sierra. The thing is, it's not atypical for Sierra. It's atypical for what Sierra became. Um, if you read the Ken Williams book... Whoa, I sped up quite a bit. Maybe it's like, you know, super mode now. Uh, and I wasn't really prepared for it either. If you read the Ken Williams book, um, he basically says that throughout the, the Sierra's history, he always tried to diversify... And, uh, and which is true, and I find it very annoying. Like, I, you know, I, I, I like the, you know, the adventures, and they would publish, like, you know, Home Designer and, like, all this other stuff. And I was like, what is this crap? Like, focus on your stuff that you're good at. But that was part of the strategy of the company was not to, like, get boxed into one specific, you know, type of, of game. And in the beginning, it was, you know, even more so. Before they, like, standardized the adventures, they were just basically, you know, do, publishing whatever, whatever was selling. And these are little, these early arcade games in the early age of, you know, computer gaming... It was like, you know, anything like this that someone took the time to program was in demand because, you know, in 1981, there wasn't like a huge, you know, bunch of things out there. So, I mean, it, it's 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 atypical for... for oh, I ran out of bullets. See, I didn't get those bullets now that are up there, the, that blinking thing, and I got them. I had run out before, so I couldn't shoot anymore. Um, so, it's it, what I'm saying is it's atypical for Sierra as we think of it. 
But in the early days, there were tons of these types of games, and a lot of them are very rare and hard to find now. It happens to be this one, for whatever reason, was very popular, and there are a lot of different ports of it, and as a result, it's not uh, hard to find. And I have a few copies of it, you know, for this video, so you'll see. Oh my gosh, am I... Oh, oh no, 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 whoa! <laughs> I got super fast again. Did I get them all? All right, I think I, like, actually got to, like... It doesn't say level two. It seems like it is level two, because, like, all this... They got all the enemies reset. Um, there's no, like, um... What was I saying? The, like, the color of the board didn't change. The actual board didn't change. Like, nothing really changed, but it... it oh. But it does seem like... I sort of advanced to level two or something like that. This is it's getting it got fast. Oh man, it got faster also. I need to start showing my face. Aren't I showing my face right now? Can you see my face, Ryan? I'm confused. Or is that a joke? You're distracting me here. <laughs> well, after after I die, maybe I'll I'll load up one of the other versions. Cause I think you, I think you get the idea with this Apple II version. The side of my face. Maybe that's what you mean, the side of my face. The fact that I can read the chat at all and still like somewhat play this game is I think I think is like is like an accomplishment. That's game over. Hey Jeremy, how's it going? The side of my face. Hey Matt, I didn't even see you come in. You're a huge fan of your crossfire and your tie four hundred. Alright, so that's that's a good segue. By the way, I got a pop filter for my microphone finally, because I watched one of these replays and I heard myself go like pop, 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 and so, <laughs> you assume that was computer generated? That's funny because you know that 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 girl that I kept saying was computer generated actually was not computer generated. So I think that's pretty funny. Guy new VR headset around tour. You definitely played enough VR games, so that's that's definitely a good investment for you. All right, so here this is the Apple II version again. Let's put this aside and let's check out the Atari version. And I actually have two Atari versions. So the first one I have here is an Atari Disc version. Again, I put it in a Ziploc bag, but it doesn't. It didn't really come in a Ziploc bag. It came in a. In a it just came shrink wrapped in a folder, and basically this the Atari folder and the Apple folder are, are basically exactly the same, except for the fact that um, they says Atari on it here. Well, let me let me put the camera so we can make sure people actually see it. Uh, it says it says Atari on it here, and it says the same price and you know thirty two k disc. And then on the back, they also and they also said it's Chris J. Sullivan and Chris Iden. So Chris Iden's the guy who ported it. And then um, on the back, it also mentions full joystick and keyboard control. Can you see that? I'm blocking my own camera. And high res graphics and sound. So that's the, but aside from that, the folders are basically the same. And the instructions are mostly the same. And even the uh, disc like looks exactly the same. It does, it's this is the same disc. Like it doesn't say on an Atari or anything like that. There's no way to tell from looking at it that it's an Atari disc. If you found one of these lying around, you wouldn't know if it's Apple or Atari. But it turns out that it is an Atari disc, because I actually did get this to load up um, on on my PC. I'm using Cryoflux and, and into Altera. So let me let me at least minimize the Apple one. Uh, let me see. Let me load up Altera. I want to... Hold on a second. All right, be quiet now. Maybe we get this thing to restart. Okay, here we go. Let me uh, change the window so I have the, the Altera show instead. All right. So here is Altera, the Atari emulator I'm using. The the Apple emulator was called Apple Win. Yeah, the gold discs are pretty cool. Um, yeah, Jeremy, that's what I was saying before. Is like this is like a Sierra game, but nobody like nobody nowadays has even heard of it because it's like not the sort of what you think of when you think of a Sierra title. Um, all right, let me uh, boot up the game. So just uh, load, the, attach the disc, uh, ETX, and then let's reboot the computer. Oh wait, it's hold on a second. Let's not do that. Let's just do hard reset. I really like how you get the real drive noise with this emulator. It's like freaking awesome. So it says Atari version by Chris Iden, Yosemite Software Products. And it, I wonder if that's like some subsidiary of Sierra or what the deal is with that. But here is the, the Apple version came up right away. This one like had to take a bunch of time loading. I'm going to give it a little loader before that. Although the Apple loader, if you remember, there was a, a much nicer color graphic screen. 
But the the two uh, games look very similar. If you remember the Apple version, the boxes were blue. I can we show it again just so you know you can remember. The Apple version had these blue boxes, and the graphics didn't look as sharp either. And then the Atari version has these green boxes. But aside from that, it's pretty much the same, you know, in terms of the uh, and the sounds are obviously a little bit different too. So you'll hear that you'll hear the play the gameplay of the sound. Ryan says, uh, "Is this Hearthstone or Pinball?" <laughs> no, I've never heard of it. All right, I'm going to try for this one to actually use the joystick controls as opposed to the. Um, I think it's set up to use the joystick controls already, but let me just uh, let's, let's just let's see. So. All right, so I think I'm using joystick. Yeah, I'm using joystick controls. So the way the joystick controls work, I'm, I'm using my my keyboard to simulate a joystick. I could actually use a joystick, but I'm not. But I'm using the keyboard controls, and basically, um, the way it works is because again, you can fire in any direction. In order to fire, you have to press the button, and then sort of immediately after, aim the joystick. If you aim the joystick first, you'll actually move. So a lot of times, you end up moving. And when you're not intending to move, when you're trying to shoot, you move instead. And so that's not necessarily so good. It's like a little bit hard to control. The keyboard is probably actually better because the keyboard is more precise controls. But I think a lot of people, when they, you know, bought, bought a game, they wanted to like send it work with the joystick. So they're like, they probably compromised and said, okay, if you want to work with the joystick, you can make it work with the joystick. But like literally it requires a bunch of practice because you see what's happening here. It all seems like the shots are going a lot faster in this version. I don't know if you noticed that. But... And the the the, uh, the graphics are definitely a little bit different. <laughs> Jeremy says, just so I understand, this is supposed to be the inside of Roger Wilco's colon. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it, actually. Um, this is the inside of Roger Wilco's colon. That's why it's, like, so dirty. Um, that's why it's green, like, puke color. But, yeah, you know what? I, I don't like this key the joystick controls, honestly. I think the keyboard controls are better. And, again, I can use the same keyboard controls with the Atari version. I'm just trying to do something different. Just for the sake of doing something different. But, I mean, essentially it's almost the same thing. The Atari actually had, you know, better graphics and sound capabilities than the Apple did. Um, but the problem is the game started off on the Apple, so, like, they weren't going to, like, make a whole new version just for Atari. So, essentially it's just a conversion. They probably took, like, the, you know, the original, like, machine code and they just converted it. Um, and the other annoying thing, by the way, about both of these things is that they're both the discs are copy protected in a weird way. So there's a bunch of bad sectors on the discs, and that's why I couldn't get the Apple version to work. If it wasn't copy protected, I could have got it to work, but I had to download an image. Ah, damn it! I had to download an image because um, there wasn't. I didn't have anything that was able to support the particular copy protection on that disc. In the Atari one. It also has Kai protection. They're both bad sector Kai protection and, and weak sectors, but I but I was able to do it for the Atari version because I had better tools. So I need to like up my game on my tools on my Apple discs essentially. But both of them have this annoying Kai protection that you know they actually you know if you read the book Hackers um, by uh, what was the guy's name wrote Hackers? I'm trying to remember now. Uh, it's a famous book that came out. And there's a lot of stuff about the, the birth of Sierra Online in there. It's a book that was written like in the 80s. And um, one of the things they talk about is how, you know, Sierra's programmers really tried to outdo themselves in terms of the, the Kai protection they put on the discs. And uh, they used all sorts of crazy Kai protection, and that was like almost a, more of a sign of their programming prowess than their, you know, actual uh, game game design or game coding was, you know, how well they could Kai protect the discs and, you know, who would actually be able to crack it and whatnot. So both of these have different Kai protection methods that are both probably equally annoying um, from the perspective of someone trying to copy the thing. I know from my perspective it was very annoying for the Apple disc particularly because I couldn't get it to actually copy. <laughs> so that was annoying. Um, but yeah, I'm, the reason I'm, I'm saying all that is because I also have the Atari cassette version and the Atari cassette version doesn't have that problem. It's not There's no Kai protection in a cassette. You can just copy it in like a hi-fi player and you're done. So you would think... Everybody would want to buy the cassette version if there's two versions, because this way they can copy it easily. I want to try one more time here. Before that, I want to read what's in the chat. But just to finish my thought, but you'll see there's a very good reason why people didn't buy the cassette version. And you can probably guess what it is. 
So Matt says this game would have been even better with two stick controls, two stick, twin stick controls on the Robotron. Yeah, I mean it's basically a Robotron. It, it, it sort of asks, it sort of begs for twin stick controls, but it wasn't really designed that way, as far as I can tell. The, the manuals, and this is the Atari manual I'm looking at now. It's the same thing. It has you know keyboard control, and they call them missiles, by the way, that you're firing. There's a nice picture of an Atari joystick here. Uh, but it definitely expects you know a joystick and not uh, not a any, any not two joysticks basically. You can also turn off the sound if you find it extremely annoying. And another nice feature: there's even a pause button on it. So if I'm playing the game and it's almost like oh my god, I gotta go to the bathroom, I hit pause and it's all it's all paused. So <laughs> that's actually nice. So not every not every game had that. I mean, like you couldn't you couldn't pause like every single game back in the day. So Mark is guessing that a cassette is a three hour load time. So. It's not quite three hours, but you did you did get the the idea of what the disadvantage of the cassette is. Um, you saw this thing came up in like about ten seconds. The cassette takes a little bit longer, um, and I'll show it to you because it's fun. This is like for posterity. I really want to see if I can beat this level on the Atari, and maybe if I stop talking and play the game a little bit, you know, I, I'll, I'll be able to do it. But I'm curious what you guys think so far. Is this something that you would have played back in the day? It's like something you did. Is this something that you would still play today, ever? Or do you think it's like just a curiosity t Whoa. Do you think it's just a curiosity today and nobody would ever play it ever again, essentially? Oh, I'm almost out of bullets. That's why the bullets appeared over there. I'm sort of in trouble because I gotta get around all... Oh, man, that guy just picked me off. I had to get around like all those people to get up where the bullets were, and, I, and it wasn't happening, unfortunately. So... They, they have a good way of, like, you know, boxing you in. It's the, I mean, the, the AI in this game is not terrible. I mean, it's not, like, amazing, but they do a good job of boxing you in and, like, taking pot shots at you from, from different directions to try to, you know, get you to mess up. I'm doing an okay job of picking them off right now. Oh, they, see, I think they get faster when there's less of them, and I'm not sure if that's, like, they intentionally programmed it in or if that's just a, an artifact of... Oh, this one, see, this one actually the maze changed colors when you, when you beat the next beat the levels. That's that's pretty cool. I'm not sure if the speed up is something that they did intentionally or just an artifact of the way that you know if there's less stuff on the screen it moves faster type thing. But either way, it's it's sort of a cool effect. All right, so I have one more guy. Let me exhaust this one guy. Either I'll die or, or not, but I probably will die, and then we'll see what happens after this. But this is, you know, I actually think this is a good game. Oh, crap. All right. I think this is a good game. This is fun. Um, but, you know, I don't know if I would keep playing it, like, over and over again. But Matt says the gameplay holds up and the simple graphics actually complement the action. Mark says, I totally play it. Maybe I'll even do so soon. Yeah, Matt says, that's what I thought. Yeah, so I guess you played the Atari version, but you saw the Apple version didn't have that, so I guess when they put, ported it to the Atari, they enhanced the graphics a little bit. All right, so I'm going to... What I'm going to do now is I'm going to reboot this thing off the cassette. Let me detach the disc. Let's reboot it. Um, first, let me show you, actually. This is the cassette version of Crossfire. Looks just like the disc version. <laughs> it's basically the same. So you see, I got tons of these. I got, I, I'm thinking of like wallpapering my, my room with these things in, in soon. Um, this is the cassette version, and the only difference is it's thicker. This one is just like paper thin. This one is thicker, so you can take a cassette out. Um, here's the cassette. So Matt wants to know, are we really going to make us sit through 18 minutes of load time? First of all, it's not 18 minutes. And second of all... You get the experience of this, and third of all, like, aren't we ch chatting here and having a good time? Like, well, like you're rushing me here. Like, what's the freaking rush? <laughs> the tape is the tape is image is like forty megs, by the way. All right, let's see if we can make it run. Cold reset. It's 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 more about uh, crossfire wallpaper. It's more about not staying through the time. It's more about staying through the noise. <laughs> So tell me if you want me to turn it down, because... Can you see the counter on the bottom there? You can see the counter, right? Yeah, you can see the counter. Oh, but if you take... If I take it, if I take focus away from the window, then, uh, you know, it's, it pauses. How's that for the load, load sounds and load experience right there? Here's, no, I didn't misspeak with 40 megs. It's 40 megs. 
because I the raw the raw audio off the uh, off the tape is like 40 megs of audio. In terms of the actual data that's on there, it's probably like 40k, but it's like 40 megs of audio. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't push. She's delicate. She is. You remember this noise, Mark? All right, so you have the cassette version, obviously. So again, the cassette version, the nice thing is you can copy it very easily. The pain in the ass is this. Sounds like my mother would just to you as a kid. I guess you tuned her out a bit, Jeremy. And Ryan, that, that board game, my brother had that. Uh, that's the one where you shoot, the, uh, you shoot those little marbles at those little star-shaped... Um, like things with the with the marbles and on the bottom and the top, so they, they sort of rolled around the board. You try to shoot the marble into the other person's goal. That was a cool game. I don't know what happened to the, the copy we had. Yeah, Ryan's getting excited. <laughs> yeah, this sound was the same, obviously, for all the cassettes. Um, but uh, I don't know if all of them were this long. Metal BB game. Yeah, exactly. It was like those little. little Little marbles, uh, like Hungry Hungry Hippos, except uh, Hungry Hungry Hippos, they were plastic, and these were like actual like metal BBs. Um, but and Hungry Hungry Hippos, you had to suck them in, this you just shoot them out, but otherwise it was sort of similar. Uh, Matt says, I used to save and load my logo pro programs to and from tape back in the day. That's the sound of progress. <laughs> it's not that bad, come on! Jeremy, like, if you had a choice between paying twenty nine ninety five for the disc version... Or pirating this version from your friend for free when you were like, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, I bet you would have pirated the tape version. <laughs> I mean, the, the disc version was so easy to, to copy. Speak up, Stu. I only hear. Yeah, here's my impression of this noise. It goes like this, like. <laughs> I won't do it, though. Uh, it's not Pepsi, it's Diet Pepsi. But otherwise, yes, Pepsi. I can turn this noise down if you want. It should be done relatively soon. It's been almost three minutes already. I think it's about like three and a half. I think it's about 345. And then this is this noise is over. But listen, again, you want the real you want the real experience, right? <laughs> Thank you, good man. No, no, that's not the, Okay, so Mark, that's the length of the tape, is that 40%? But actually, the data is only on about half the tape, and the rest of it's like a long lead-out that, that, that you don't need, actually. So it's not going to go all the way to, to 100%. It's the pirate version of a 10-minute loading screen that sounds like Banshee squealing. I'd buy the disc version. <laughs> it's like people are, like, people are dropping off the stream right now, and they, when there's, like, they join the stream, and they're like, ee, ee. it sounds like you know some, some crazy guy or something. It's almost done, like, really, I promise. I want the realistic experience, too. Yeah, exactly. Ah, here we go. Alright, so now that it's finished loading... Is, is it exactly like the other one? I don't think it is, actually. I think it looks different. Look, look at that... Look at the alien... I don't. I wish I had a screenshot of the other one saved, but... The aliens at the top look different to me. The, the font at the right looks different. What's the street hundred percent your PC spontaneous to combust? I don't think this is the same thing as the other one. I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it's different. Yeah, Matt says the graphics are, are definitely different. I, I I agree. Your ship looks pretty much the same, but like all the enemies look different, pretty much. So let's 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 less detail? Yeah, maybe. The font is different too. So it could be these are two completely different conversions. I'm actually wonder if it's the same name on it. Yeah, they both are Chris Iden, it says, but yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Not the same. Everyone agrees. Okay, good. Yeah, because I, I don't have like an easy way to just switch back to the other one because it's the same emulator. Looks a bit more detailed, brighter colors. <laughs> Ryan's still obsessed with the, with the with the board game. Right, let's try let's try this out here. I'll try with the joystick again. Uh, assuming the joystick controls are the same. Just any key to continue. All right, here we go. All right, it's the same controls. But yeah, the, the enemies look totally different. They, they're blue now. They were blue before. I'm, I'm pretty sure they were completely different. But the gameplay, obviously, is, you know, pretty much the same. But let's see if I can beat the level and see if, it went, you know, if anything is different. Oh, okay, that was like a treasure that appeared right in front of me. Actually, you know what's very different about this? When you move the joystick, it only moves one, one turn at a time, and it stops. In the other one, it was continuously moving, 
until I until I like let go or did something else. Now it's like actually much easier to control because it only moves one box at a, at a time. I still got myself shot. The other version would take even longer to load because of those high risk sprites. Uh, so this version was for you're right. I mean it's a 16k cassette, and the other one says 32k disc. So this the cassette version is for an Atari with less memory. So maybe that's part of the reason. Although like I don't see really what the why this would take less memory. Lower res graphics reduce load times. Yeah, maybe. But is it really lower res? It look, you guys think it looks lower res? I just think it looks different. I can't. To me, it doesn't. I, I don't see like it's lower res. But maybe I, I. I don't. My visual acuity is not as great as yours potentially. I'm not wearing my glasses either, and I don't want to put them on right now because they're 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 dirty. <laughs> uh, and plus, I, I'm not so good with close up stuff with my glasses. But if you tell me it's different, I mean I know for sure it's different. If you tell me it's lower res, then that makes sense because it definitely. Damn it! See, I couldn't even stop either. I couldn't stop like. It's, it's definitely um, different, and if, it definitely requires less memory. So if you tell me it's, it's lower res, it definitely makes sense. Pfft, I gotta get the hang of this a little bit better. Why well, it says the same exact graphics. Matt says lower res and reduced color death graphics use less memory. And Mark says, I mean, this play Atari 400, yeah. Let's try it again. I think it's definitely different, too. I want to beat the level to see what happens. If it, if it maybe if it doesn't change color, then we know for sure it's it's different because the other one changed color. It's hard to shoot these things with with the joystick controls. If I try to shoot, I move instead, and then I get killed. <sighs> ah, that was just pure luck. That was also luck. That was luck. Ah, that was bad luck. <laughs> Alright, I still got a couple of lives, though. If I could just survive enough to make it to the next level, I'll be happy. It's just very hard to shoot. I'm just trying not to talk for like a second here so I can have a chance of beating these guys. What happened? I tried to shoot it. didn't shoot. That's why you buy hard to shoot. Okay, they're starting to, starting, to, starting to disappear. Uh-oh. That's stupid. I backed myself into a corner. Almost done. Almost done. Ah! Damn it! Alright, I'll try it again. What do you guys say here? Color scheme change wouldn't need a lot of memory. Just a little poke command. Yeah, maybe. Oh, Mark is going back to uh, where to... Sorry, I'm getting myself killed while I'm talking. Are you going back to like the earlier place of the stream or something? Or are you just going like to open, open an emulator? Mark is like the emulator king. He has like pre-done images of like every single game ever made, it seems like. <laughs> he even played Hippodrome, which is a good game. Very underrated arcade game. I tried to move. That was crap. I don't care. I, this is not, I don't need perfection here. I just want to survive. Survive long enough to actually see the next level. And maybe get the points. That's called being greedy. They're shooting you like 100 miles an hour. It's like really hard to get them. But it's definitely much easier. Like if I stay down here and let them sort of come and get me, I have a much better shot than if I like let them all get there and then they all surround me. Ah, damn. Okay, interesting. So it sort of changed a little bit, but it was a much more subtle change. Like it did, ch like it got like greenish yellow instead of green, but it's definitely much more subtle than the other the other level where it was like. Very clearly, the other the other version rather it was very clearly different. So, uh, all right, I'm dead. That may be memory restrictions or something like that. I'm not sure. So, what are you guys saying? Um, don't stare at me, Southwestern Hick. <laughs> Mark is the master of arcades, the top computer guy in the world. Matt, Matt says, 
I vividly remember this game giving me panic attacks in later levels. Learn to look at every side of the screen all at once to avoid getting picked off. Yeah. I'm sure, like, when you get deeper into this, it becomes much more intense. And Jeremy says, so if this was online studios, it come out around or after Mystery House. So Mystery House came out in 1980. So this is 1981, so it's the following year. But the the folders that you see, like, some of the early adventure games in are very similar to these ones, actually. So um, it's pretty similar. All right, let's... Uh, Let's check out the PC version now. I'll keep this one, I'll pause it, and I'll keep it running. So we can come back to it if we want to. Uh, let me load up the PC version. So, give me one second. The IBM PC version, you would expect, would be absolutely horrible. Because the IBM PC was not designed for games. So theoretically, it should be absolutely terrible. Of course, I know what it actually is because I've seen it already, so I'm sort of being unfair. Uh, where's my stupid DOS box? Here it is. Okay, let me uh, put the DOS box here. Oh, why isn't that working? Come on. One second. DOS box is loaded. Here we go. Okay. There it is. So let me, uh, I don't think we have enough room for my little picture, so I'll put it back on. Oh, not really enough room for it. Uh, hell with you, picture guy. <laughs> I was trying to put on the Stu's Reviews picture, but it doesn't really fit, so I'll just put this here. I uh, don't think I've ever seen the PC version. Side-by-side -side comparison. I have to, I'll have to click on that afterwards. Wait, hold on a second. Let me click on it now. <laughs> you may be really curious now. Side by side comparison. Oh, so I was right. The font is really different. The font is completely different, and the the enemies look completely different too. Even though the colors are sort of the same. Mark, that's. I wish. Here, let me see if I can if I can actually like show this. In the in the in the in the actual video, if I can figure out how to do that. Uh, hold on. Let me do this. I'm like blocking everything here, but like this is the, this is the difference. The font is completely different, and the enemies are different too. So that's pretty cool, actually. And Mark, that's a cool uh, cool call what you did there. All right, so here's the PC version. Um, let's do boot c temp. Crossfire.tc. Uh, okay, what did I? What's the, oh, it's Crossfire IBM, I think. Crossfire IBM. All right, so this is the PC version. Um, and Mark says the one on the left was the disc version. Yeah, you're you're right. The the one with the with the bigger fonts was the cassette version. So this is this, this is the PC version. As you can see, it looks pretty horrible. Um, there's a, there's a title screen, but it's just like text, uh, just you know black and white text. I had the same choice keyboard or joystick. Oh, I didn't even show you the PC version. The PC version came in a box. Um, the box I have, but I don't have it here. All I have with me right now is the actual disc and the instructions. So I'll show you the disc. The disc is now like a newer version of the disc, and it has you know instead of online systems, it says Sierra Online. And uh, there's Crossfire. Again, it doesn't tell you what platform it's from. None of these Sierra games ever told you the early ones, like if it's an IBM disc, a Atari disc, an Apple disc, you just have to sort of guess. So if you find something like on an eBay auction, you, you, you'd only know what it is if like it's in a pile of a bunch of other IBM discs. You can hope it's probably an IBM version, but you can't really be sure. So let's, let's start this up. Oh, first of all, I have to slow it down. Because the DOS box goes super fast. All right, so I have it like at a reasonable speed now. But you see, like, what do you guys think of these graphics? This is basically like really ugly cyan, uh, you know, boxes, and everything else is white. <laughs> it's not very good, right? Um, looks pretty horrible. Let me play it for a second, so you just you can we can see the hear the sound or whatever. Oh, hell we go. Press the wrong buttons. PC speaker. 
So nothing too exciting, right? However, this is what it looks like on a IBM PC with a RGB monitor, like a regular PC monitor. Now, if you have a composite monitor, however, you get different results. So let's try it. I'm gonna turn this, I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna do it again with a composite monitor. And now we get interesting stuff here. Because Mark says the graphics equal puke like most early PC games. Well, that's what they want you to think. <laughs> Boot, C temp, same same image. Crossfire, IBM, TC. Alright, the same ugly screen here. Now, I can press F12 in this in this emulator to switch between RGB and composite. So here we go. Alright, first of all, this is the RG this is the composite mode. Now I have some colors. I'll do it again. The RGB composite. Now you see like there's artifacting in the it looks like an apple actually. The way the text is artifacting in the uh, in the tech in the uh, colors, like there's like it's very similar to that Transylvania game we played on the Apple, uh, where there's like this blue and, and orange sort of mixed together, and uh, the actual crossfire text is orange. But yeah, it's very, very similar to the Apple II. <laughs> Mark says, looks like I should put on my 3D glasses. But yeah, I, I mean, compared to this, look, look at the difference. And let's go to the actual game. Again, i got to slow it down. But look at the difference here. Again, here's that look before. And here's what the just just replacing the monitor. You see, it gets a little bit blurrier when you do that because it's like taking advantage of artifacting to make the color. But I mean, it, this is a hell of a lot better, right? I mean, like it's like if you have if you're playing like early IBM PC games and you're using composite mode, like not not every single game supported it, but a lot of them did. And then it's like it's funny because everybody nowadays who plays this game, if you look if you look at other screenshots and stuff, like in most cases, like. It's like, you think it's like this, and everyone's like, yeah, the early IBM PC games sucked, the graphics were horrible, blah, 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 but it's like, hold on, buddy, like, you're not doing it right, you got this here, too. So, basically, the the PC is very over, un, very underrated. Uh, let's try to, let's try to play this game. Time to do the keyboard controls, I didn't bother to try to connect a joystick up to DOSBox, although I could do that. It's the same PC speaker, though, unfortunately, because... The speaker does not get any better when you plug in a different monitor. Uh, I'm also not sure how fast it's supposed to go. This seems reasonable to me, though. This is the speed that that um, the Jim is, Jim Leonard has told me basically is the right speed to use for early um, PC games in DOSBox. It's about like 300 cycles. I'm running at 278 cycles, um, so I believe this is the this is the right speed. Or if it's not, it's very close to it. And it looks like reasonable based on the other games we played. I feel like the guy, my ship is going a little bit slow, but they're, but the bullets are going pretty fast, so I think it's just a quirk of this version that it goes a little bit, you know, differently speeded. If that's a word. Differently speeded. I'm out of bullets now again, so I gotta go get these. Oh, crap. They're not gonna let me get them, are they? <laughs> Look how they're all circling here. Let me get the bullets. The only advantage I have is I go a little bit faster than they do. Uh, come on. I, actually, I have a couple of bullets left. I need to, like, beat Kamikaze here or something. Oh. Nice. Ah! Ah! Damn it. That wasn't fair. I mean, <laughs> I guess it was fair, but it didn't feel fair. It felt like I was there, I was just had no chance there. But, I mean, like, that's what happens in a good game of Pac-Man also, to be fair. So it's not like, really, it's unfair. It's just I suck. So, yeah, I mean, what do you guys think of the different versions? I still have the PC Junior version, which is completely different than this one. It's, the, it's like not the same, it's not like the same version just running out of PC Junior. It's a different port. Oh, no. Wow, that was, I, I was amazing how I actually just dodged that. I took advantage of, like, the, the fact that it actually let me move back and forth. Let's see what happens when I beat the level. If I beat the level, come on. All right, so this in this version, there's no different colors or anything. It just resets. It looks like the monsters may be a little bit different, but aside from that, it's completely the same thing. So I'm not. Uh, it's not as exciting as the Atari version, actually. And Matt it seems to agree because Matt says I still think the Atari version has been the best so far. Mark, you gotta go. Sorry about that, uh, but uh, have a good night and glad you can you can make it here a little bit. 
All right, it's been 45 minutes. Uh, let's try the PC Junior version. But again, this is this is pretty nice, right? I mean, I like this. So okay, the PC Junior version I have also. I don't have it here. It's I, it's somewhere around here. I don't know where it is. It comes in a little cartridge, like like if you saw in the thumbnail for the video. Um, it's a little cartridge. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to actually like play like load that cartridge into a PC because they don't. There's no cartridge dumper that anybody made for a PC Junior, unless you actually have a PC Junior, which sort of defeats the purpose. So, unfortunately, I can't do that, but I was able to download the image from the internet, and, you know, luckily, at least I have the PC version. If I don't can't, if I can't play the PC Junior version, like, authentically, at least I can play the PC version authentically. So, let me start this again. Oh, I need to change the uh, the, the machine type to, uh, to PC Junior, so let me do that. PC Junior... Start it again. Oops. All right, so now it's uh, PC Junior, and uh, let's uh, boot. C temp cross fire. Was it just cross dot? Uh, let's check the name of the file. PCJ or something. I'll be able to find it. Cross.jrc. All right, so here's the PC Junior version. Uh, first of all, it was published by IBM. So it was one of the titles that IBM picked up to publish for the PC Junior in 1983, along with King's Quest, famously. But there was other games that they picked up, both from Sierra and not from Sierra, that came in the same clamshell cases that you're used to seeing like the original King's Quest in. And... Uh, that's why it says copyright 1983 Sierra Online Inc. and also copyright 1983 IBM Core. So now we have nice color without any artifacting or anything like that because the PC Junior graphics were like pr pretty much like EGA, essentially. So this will not run on a stock IBM PC. It requires a PC Junior. So I'll pick keyboard. Again, i got to slow the thing down. But you see it looks totally different. The, uh, now it's like solid boxes instead of instead of draw instead of hollow boxes, which I think every other version had hollow boxes. And uh, just a completely different game. So let's let's try to play it though. I mean, well, I shouldn't say completely different game. The sounds are, are a little bit better, but not much. I, mean, I don't think they're the same. I think they're a little bit different. But yeah, the enemies are different. I mean, obviously it's really the same game. It's not like they've changed anything. Maybe the AI is slightly different because it's probably programmed from scratch. But it's not like it's a different game. It's not like this is Crossfire Part 3 or something like that. But, you know, obviously, everybody with different computers back in the day had a slightly different experience. It's a little bit weird that IBM would choose to, like, create a special PC Junior version of this when the regular IBM PC version would have worked fine on a PC Junior. And it's not like this is such an amazing showcase for the PC Junior's capabilities. I mean, it's okay, but it's not amazing. I, I bet you, like, what actually happened was Sierra themselves probably, you know, said, hey, um, we're making this King's Quest thing for you. Oh, I'm out of bullets. We're making this King's Quest thing for you. Can we also just also do, like, uh, some other releases of some of our other games? And IBM was probably like, yeah, whatever, I guess. And for Sierra, it would have made sense because, you know, they thought this PC Junior would be a huge deal. And they'd open up their game, which probably sold, you know, a few copies on the IBM PC, which is more business-oriented. They could open up a whole new market to the uh, PC Junior customer if IBM was actually selling it. Um, and Matt says the PC Junior version looks pretty good, to be honest. Let's see what happens. I beat the level. All right, so this one also, we get different colors. So the PC Junior version, like, you know, almost is the best-looking version of all of them. All the graphics are very sharp. There's no artifacting. There's nice colors. The colors do change. The monsters are very detailed. Um, you know, it's like they, they're not like just little blobs or whatever. There's actually like a lot of detail to them. I think this is the best. This is the this is the, probably the best graphics of all the ones we looked at. Again, though, like, you know, I, I'm assuming from, a, from the Sierra perspective, the main advantage here was the fact that they got IBM to publish it for them. They Like IBM, like this is a special PC Junior version of this game that like all the game players are going to want. And IBM is like, OK, if you say so, Sierra, you know, we'll do that. So it may, it probably, they probably sold a whole ton of copies of these. I mean, because if you if you look at how many copies of the PC version are like lying around on eBay or whatnot, compared to the number of copies of the PC Junior version that are lying around, I mean the numbers are not even 
like comparable. And there's like so many copies of the PC Junior version, like these like uh, you know clamshell cases. Every single IBM PC dealer was selling them because like, they're IBM published, and they're like you know like most of them are very common. Not all of them, and like there's some of the King's Quest. I mean that's pretty common too. Just hard to find it with the overlay. But a lot of them are very, very common, and the IBM PC version of, of Crossfire that was published by Sierra is, oh no, I'm out of bullets again, is quite hard to find compared to the Atari version or the or the Apple version, let's say. I think the Atari version is probably the second most common version. First of all, there's two of them, disc and tape, and second of all, um, Atari dealers were also really, really good in terms of like um, you know keeping the Atari alive for many years, so when people threw out you know the back catalogs of other other systems, the Atari system, the Atari dealers like kept all these old you know twenty six hundred games in stock and kept all their old stock of Atari eight bit stuff. So it's sort of not so hard to find the Atari version. I think partially for that reason, and the PC Junior version, like I said, is pretty easy to find. Except unfortunately, you know computers don't have a cartridge slot nowadays, so not so easy to play it. But the uh, the actual IBM PC version is very hard to find. There's a guy on eBay selling one right now for like 400 bucks, which I think is he's out of his mind. But I mean, the reason why he thinks he can get that price is just because there's not a lot of copies out there, and so he sees you know an opportunity you know potentially for himself. So yeah, I think the Matt, what do you think in terms of the, is the best version? Or Ryan, who else is who else is still here? Uh, what do you guys think is the best version of everything? I, I think it's this one, personally, but, you know, there's also a lot to be said for the original, you know. I mean, the Apple II version is the original. There's, oops, I got killed. But I was doing really well. That's the first time I lost a life, actually. There's definitely something to be said for, like, the original version of the game, playing it on the original format that it was intended for. I don't know what, you know, if, I bet you Jay Sullivan, if you asked him about the you know, PC Junior version, he'd probably be like, that piece of garbage, I had nothing to do with it. I think it's complete garbage, and don't ever speak its name again. I was, I'm too busy, like, talking to concentrate. Let me see if I can actually finish this last couple of guys so I can see the next color. There we go. Oh, now it's yellow. It's, and everything turned red, too. It's it's cool. All right, I'm going to play until I lose my, my, my last guy, and then I'm going to look at the chat and see what you guys have to say. But, yeah, an early Sierra title. Jeremy says they all look great. That's That's nice. I like that. Even the even the PC version without the composite monitor, Jeremy. The truth is, like us nostalgic people, we like everything. We're not so picky. We just want to have a good time. <sighs> well, I can't believe I survived that. I don't know, I'm like speaking too soon here, but I'm still alive for now. Ha ha ha! I managed to get my, get my bullets. You couldn't even stop me, you suckers. Yeah, an early Sierra title that like really is it's probably known among Atari like players, Atari 8-bit players, but it's not known among Sierra collectors and like, you know, collectors maybe, but not the casual person who thinks of Sierra would never think of this game. And it's really a shame because it is a good game and it, you know, it has some of that Sierra magic and deserves to be, you know, spoken about along with other other Sierra titles. So that's part of the reason why I'm doing this right now. The other reason is that I had tons of them. So I wanted to just, you know, show off the differences. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a lot of fun. Let's see if I can get the next level here. Almost almost done. Almost there. Back to green. I think that's enough. I can keep playing probably for a while, but I, think that's, I feel like that's enough for now. So, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for tonight. It's relatively quick. The adventure games take a lot longer. These action games, obviously or over a lot quicker, but this is what I wanted to do. So you got to see five different versions of the game that were all different. Apple, Atari 8-bit cassette, Atari 8-bit disc, IBM PC, two versions actually of that, because you two different monitors, and PC Junior. Matt says I'm getting pretty good at it. I'm, I'm good at games. <laughs> I'm good at games, as long as I'm not, like, if, I'm, if I actually concentrate, you know, I beat Ninja Gaiden, I can't be that bad. All right, guys. Mark is gone already. Matt, and Jeremy, thanks for sticking around till the end. Oh, there was a C64 release of Crossfire. There was also a VIC-20 release. Um, I didn't show every single version that exists because I was li trying to limit it to the ones I actually have that I actually own. But, um, yeah, there is a C64 release. I looked at the screenshots. I mean, obviously it looks pretty similar, but I couldn't tell you, like, I bet you the music is better because, uh, you know, the Commodore 64 is known for its good music. 
And Jeremy, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for, for the kind words about the channel. Um, I actually posted this video, like the link to this, on like the Apple group on Facebook, the Atari group, the DOS group, and the Sierra group. And I think nobody showed up for any from any of those groups. So I guess uh, <laughs> maybe some people will see it after the fact. But I think it is pretty cool, honestly. And that's the whole purpose here of this channel is to showcase stuff that is not is a little bit off the beaten path, but still worth looking at. It's not like uh, you're. You know, you're uh, like uh, Among Us or uh, whatever else you know want to want to talk about. That's like everyone's playing. It's something a little bit different. So thanks for joining everyone who's here, and thanks everyone who's watching this after the fact. If you're not already subscribed to the channel and you like this stuff, please subscribe because I want to do th more things like this. And uh, please like and please comment. And let me know what you think. And uh, have a great night, everybody who's watching right now. Thank you to the regulars who are on here. Thanks, Matt and Jeremy. And thanks, Matt and Mark, to leave. And thanks, Ryan, who I think passed out. And uh, thanks for all the people watching later. Yeah, exactly. Just you, you do a good job with your channel, too, with the unique games, Jeremy. Um, definitely that, that all that full motion video stuff. It's just it's just hard to stream full motion video because like there's so much talking and you can't really talk yourself. You know what I'm talking about. It's just difficult. But this older stuff, you know, I'm able to, I was able to concentrate and actually beat a couple levels and still talk, so... That's my accomplishment for the week, I guess. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, thanks so much. And uh, have a great night, everybody. And we'll do this again really soon. Peace, everybody. Peace out.